Arabic alchemists considered the world from a point of view inherited from ancient Greece. They regarded, regarded the world as a huge system in which each part of the sublunary world, i.e. the world under the moon, was in direct correlation with and submitted to the supralunary world, i.e. the world above the moon. As a comparison, we can say that they perceived the world as a kind of a gigantic clock in which each cog is dependent on the others and each movement is the result of a meaningful chain of movements. Similarly, they called the world macrocosm or large world and man microcosm, little world, which are both in correlation. In order to give you an idea of the kind of thinking we find in the world of alchemists, I will explain one of the most widespread concepts of transmutation that we find in Arabic alchemy, the theory of the elixirs. The theory was created and developed in the most famous corpus of texts in the field, the texts attributed to Jabir ibn Hayyan, who may have been a legendary figure of the second half of the 8th century. A very large collection of alchemical texts has been attributed to this figure. While the core of this collection may have been written by a single person, maybe Jabir ibn Hayyan himself, many treatises were obviously written by authors between the second half of the 8th century and the 9th century CE or even later. This corpus is one of the earliest attestations of Arabic alchemy, and it is by far the most influential. The elixir theory is based on a theory inherited from Greece, the theory of the four elements. Everything in the sublunary world is a compound of four elements, fire, air, water and earth. Each of these principles is itself characterized by two of four elementary properties. Fire is hot and dry, air is hot and moist, water is cold and moist, and earth is cold and dry. Things differ from each other because of their proportion of the four elements. The elixir theory is quite a simple concept. Since things differ according to the elementary proportions, Changing the elementary balance of a thing will change the thing itself. So, if we know the elementary balance of lead and that of coal, we can prepare a compound of the four elements with a certain balance, which will, when added to lead, make it become gold. This compound is made by distilling certain substances, and it is called an elixir. It is actually a powder in Arabic alchemy and did not become the ideal liquid we all imagine before the idea had penetrated the Latin West. After its transmission to the Latin world, alchemy continued to be much studied and developed in the Arab Muslim world up to the 14th century by important authors such as Jildaki. Recent studies suggest that alchemy flourished even later, during the Ottoman period. After this short survey of alchemy in the Arab Muslim world, we will go further in the so-called occult sciences. Godfrey de Kalatay will speak about the varieties of magic in Islam next week. Mm -hmm.